Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you a video talking about my top five favorite characters on Sci-Fi Z Nation. And uh, this video isn't going to be like an hour long or anything like that, but uh, after the craziness that was the finale and the insanity we got because of <laughs> that cliffhanger, uh, I definitely wanted to do an updated list uh, discussing who my favorite characters are and sort of uh, ranking them. Um, but they all, you know, they all hold their place on the show. They all have a certain... Uh, you know, spot on the show that they, you know, they deserve. Um, but my rankings have sort of changed since last time. If you guys want to see who my top five or so were, um, like, say, almost a year ago, feel free to look that up on my channel in the search bar. Uh, but yeah, it has, it has changed a little bit. You know, as certain char characters have developed more than others, uh, certain ones have uh, changed a bit in certain ways as well. Uh, I was eager to talk about it again. And also the fact that I just want to talk about Z Nation a little bit more because of how awesome that finale was. And how I basically just want to watch uh, Season 4 right now, you know, to calm down a little bit and be relieved <laughs> somehow. Um, yeah. So let's get into it. Uh, before we get into the actual top five, though, I did want to go over a few honorable mentions. Uh, characters that I do like, but don't quite crack the top five, No, don't quite go over uh, those few. Um, a couple of them, uh, are, uh, let me see, okay, there we go, a couple of them are, uh, well, one of them actually is a dead character, and that would be, uh, Garnett, Charles Garnett, and, uh, he was in season one, you know, at least, uh, half of it, and, you know, like, uh, Hammond, he was presented as our, uh, new lead character, or as our, uh, main character that we were going to be following, um, some people point out his, like, uh, physical similarities to, like, uh, Rick Grimes and stuff like that. Uh, but over those few episodes, though, I did get to like him, you know, quite a bit, you know? Um, and, of course, uh, romance between him and Warren, uh, brood and different things of that nature. And he showed himself to be a capable leader, you know, with a good heart as well. Um, but he was killed off in episode six. And, you know, part of me wishes he was still around, but at the same time, I'm glad Z Nation does have the guts to kill off main characters, uh, at least once in a while. Um, but still, uh, Garnett, he is, uh, one of my favorite characters early on, and he certainly deserves to at least be, uh, mentioned now, even as far into the series as we are at this point. So, yeah, honorable mention, Charles Garnett. Another one is gonna be Citizen Z. I can see why he'd probably be on some people's actual top five. Um, and DJ Qualls, he certainly, you know, does a good job in the role as the uh, entertaining, uh, you know, we get a whole different perspective with, uh, Citizen Z, really. Um, you know, of course, he's been in the Arctic, you know, since the series has began. He's gotten his own, uh, you know, perspective on the stories, his own little stories going on there. And, you know, he's definitely central to the show. Um, I just wonder how much longer he's going to be on the show, because as Rush... Russell Hodgkinson had uh, mentioned when I met him um, that he does take quite a bit of money to uh, you know keep going on the show so I don't know he might not be on for the whole series run we shall see um, depends on how the show goes really I guess but yeah Citizen Z is definitely an essential character right? he definitely has a place on the show but at the same time because he hasn't been with our group he hasn't had quite as much of a, of a chance to uh, develop or get in on the action as much as the others have so naturally he's not quite as high up there for me as some of the others but still definitely deserves a mention at the very least and my last honorable mention is going to be Hector and Hector played by Emilio Rivera you know who's a you know pretty uh, incredible actor um you know he joined the show in I want wait what did he show up in season two at all I I can't remember sorry about that um I could just look it up real quick instead of making a fool out of myself. How about that one, huh? But uh, the time to prevent that is probably past. <laughs> and just let me uh, look this up so I can clarify. Let's see. Okay, yeah, he did uh, show up in season two. Um, at first, as a pretty straight up villain. Um, but season three, it was definitely a good season for Hector because we seen him uh, slowly develop and. You know, he was leader of this gang, the Red Hand. You know, he's working alongside uh, one of the main antagonists towards the end of season two. Um, but, you know, he, he began to regret his action. You know, he began to regret some of the things he had done in his life, who he became, the persona, as Scorpion, he had created. Um, 
so really he was a he turned out to be a fairly well developed char character at least for uh, you know the way that this show usually goes and I grew to like him quite a bit and last we seen he was stabbed to death by Vasquez uh, you know Hector probably accepted it in a way he understood why it happened of course um, him and Warren seemed to grow a bit more of a bond as well but last we seen of him his eyes did open and they were like this green almost like snake like uh, you know color in a way um, it was kind of, I found it kind of odd that we didn't see him in the finale I forgot to mention that in the video I did of that but I felt like he should have shown up uh, to some capacity and I do hope he does show up in season four because I, I feel like it'd be kind of odd if they showed him waking up as this new thing and you know, never being seen again. Um, so in a way, it would be a fitting end for him, but at the same time, I, I, I want to see more of Hector again. So yeah, my last honorable mention is going to be Hector. Um, and then, of course, there's other characters I've on the show like uh, Cassandra and uh, Mac. Um, you, know, you know, those are fine. They they were they were all right. You know, for their uh, you know, initial, for the initial early part of the show, um, but, you know, things have just changed just so much since then, but yeah, honorable mentions go to Hector, Garnett, and Sis and Z, and now my actual top five, uh, number five is going to be Warren, Roberta Warren, played by Kalita Smith, sort of has been our lead on the show for the past couple seasons now, you know, it was sort of shared between her and Garnett until Garnett was killed off. Um, but now it's sort of uh, her and Murphy as well as, you know, Addy, but we'll, we'll talk more about Addy later. Um, but Lauren, uh, Kalita Smith, she's a very capable actress, you know, she even shows that, you know, being on a show that you can't always take seriously like Z Nation. Um, but she's definitely one of those capable of them acting-wise. And, you know, she's very, very efficient, of course. Even uh, Murphy, as he gets more and more insane, recognizes, you know, still is able to recognize Warren's capabilities and a threat and usefulness she could pose with him, you know? Um, she's been through her own uh, trauma, but she's uh, really risen and uh, you know kept up her consistency as, lead, as a leader, you know, well throughout the season so far, even if that becomes shared with uh, other characters that have gotten uh, stronger as well. Um, but you know, there, there's a lot I could say about her, um, but she's definitely one of the most uh, you know, fun to watch with the fight, scene, the fight scene she's been involved in and such. So yeah, number five is gonna be Warren. Uh, she was a little bit higher, but you know, not that I like her any less. You know, but this character, other characters have grown. You know, to pass a certain point for me, but I still do like her quite a bit. Um, so number five is gonna be Warren. Number four is gonna be 10K Tommy, um, or Thomas, as Murphy would call him this season. You know, he's sort of. I've said before, he's sort of like the. Daryl Dixon of the show in a way and that he's become like this uh, big fan favorite character from the show and of course you know he does have his fangirls and such <laughs> um but you know he's a uh, you know he's a character I always liked but he's one that has uh, snuck up on me quite a bit in a way actually um because I like I said I always liked him but how much of a pillar to the show he's become is actually uh you know pretty commendable um, not Zhang who plays him, he's, he's done a pretty good job, you know, uh, you know, he, he got the acting part, you know, I think it was pretty close to when he got out of school, um, you know, and Russell, Russell Hodgkinson and him had, uh, you know, lived nearby each other, and, you know, 10K, you know, of course, we know him for, you know, counting the amount of zombies he's killed, the amount of Z's, um, you completely, uh, incredible aim, you know, probably better than Daryl Dixon, you know, I can give that to him, and, uh, you know, uh, we still do hear him count once in a while, and I'm glad they didn't go the full Cassandra route with, uh, 10k this season, I'm glad he sort of came back around as his own person, it would have been, it would have really sucked to lose 10k like that too, so I'm glad they didn't do that, and he's really an essential member to the group as well, and, uh, Roberta, you know, does sort of count on 10k like Rick counts on Daryl in a way as well, even though they're they're a bit divided in a, to a certain extent right now anyway. Um, I'm sure they'll end up working together pretty well. You know, I know I also want to mention the, uh, you know, father-son dynamic between him and Doc, but they can also be best friends, so I, I really like that part of it as well. So yeah, number, ten, number uh, four is going to be 10K, you know, definitely a fun character you can care about, but also take seriously at the same time. So yeah, number three is going to be Doc. Uh, played by Russell Hodgkinson. I had the pleasure of uh, meeting Russell Hodgkinson at a 
Comic Con in my state this year back in October. Um, and that was a complete joy. You know, uh, R Russell Hodgkinson is a very nice guy, very humble, very down to earth. And it was really great to talk to him and hear about some, you know, the behind the scenes stories and stuff like that. Um, so meeting Russell Hodgkinson, getting to interact with him a little bit personally, um, it made me appreciate the character a little bit more naturally, you know. Uh, he's, def he, he's definitely a character I couldn't see the show without now, you know. He's a comic relief, you know. He's been kind of like that for a while, and Russell Hodgkinson's kind of appreciated that about him. Because before Russell Hodgkinson, he always, always played like thug number one, thug number two, or, you know, just like trying to look mean all the time. But Doc's a very fun eccentric uh but also full of heart character you know like i say he's our comic relief at the same time he's often the peacekeeper he's often the voice of reason or a sort of levity on the show you know he sort of keeps the heart involved that i think or at least he tries to even if he can't convince others um you know so uh doc he's a very special character i think you know uh, some people compared them to like just a knockoff of like Herschel from The Walking Dead early on, but they're very different characters, trust me. Um, and of course, Doc, he gets his own solo episodes as well, which some people can argue are a filler. Um, but still, I think he's a character I really can't see the show without. Uh, and like I said, with uh, 10K, I like their father son dynamic. And just how much Doc ends up caring about 10K, you know, being uh, blended and stuff, it, it, it was actually pretty touching. And I really hope Doc lasts, you know, for the entire uh, time on the series, if he can. Or for the entire uh, run of the series, you know, if possible. So yeah, number four is going to, I mean, number three is going to be uh, Doc. Number two is Murphy, the Murphy himself, played by Keith Allen. He, I still really see Murphy as sort of the, the uh, face of the show, um, or at least he's the center of the premise and the point of the premise ever since season one, of course, being bitten and not turning. But we've recently had the revelation that, you know, spoilers, you know, Murphy has been dead for the past two years since he was bitten like that. Um, but still, uh, Keith Allen, he does a pretty awesome job in the role. Um, you know, he, uh, Murphy's definitely an asshole, so, uh, Keith Allen plays, a, a really good asshole. <laughs> um, he, he's always been sort of narcissistic, as well as, like, uh, you know, hypocritical and, uh, arrogant. Um, but at the same time, you're entertained by him. You, but if you're with a group, you probably want to take his head off, too. Um, but for, from the, pan, from the, uh, fans' perspective, he's definitely a lot of fun to watch. And we've also seen Murphy have a little bit of, you know, heart sometimes as well. Um, you know, when it comes to Lucy especially, but he did also help uh, 10K when they came across the Collector in Season 2. Um, and, you know, him and Warren seem to have sort of an unspoken bond or connection with each other as well, which I've appreciated. And even seemed uh, a bit upset when uh, Garnett was uh, killed or when Garnett took the bullet for him as well. Um, so Murphy is a character I, I really would have a hard time seeing the show without, um, just because he's been sort of like the cornerstone in the... Uh, jumping off point of the story since the beginning um so i'm eager to see where murphy goes in the long run uh you know you see him really develop a lot you know since he's gotten more intelligent uh, arguably more psychotic um but we see that murphy does still care a lot about lucy and he does have a chance to keep going to some capacity with the season three cliffhanger we'll we'll uh, see about that one though but yeah, Murphy, definitely uh, number two for me. He was my number one, my number one favorite for a while. Um, but that has uh, changed just because of how awesome this uh, next character is. So my number one favorite character on the show is going to be Addie, Addison Carver, played by Anastasia Baranova. Um, she is just awesome, and she's incredible, spectacular. Um She's become my favorite. You know, I always... I have gotten to really uh, enjoy, like, strong female characters on TV shows and movies as well when they're done right and when I actually buy into what bad, what badassery they have. But not only that, they also have some interesting vulnerability as well, and they don't have to be perfect either. And that's something that Addie is, you know? Um, you know, she's definitely had her trauma. She definitely still has her issues, but she's really become arguably the strongest member of the group. Uh, even, even I think, uh, surpassing Warren, if you really, uh, look into it, you know, I think it's still, of course, debatable, and, uh, Warren's still probably more, uh, you know, technically, you know, trained and skilled and such, 
But Addie, she's really gotten a lot of concentration. I really appreciate how much development and time the show's given to her in season three. Um, of course, she uh, had lost her mother. You know, she uh, lost uh, Mac. You know, early into season two, wh which really just transformed Addie, which was really a start of her new uh, sort of progression. And I, I think they've done a wonderful job with her. You know, I've, I've uh, thought about her role on uh, Drake and Josh and Nickelodeon recently. Um, you know, she played this uh, Udonian pen pal to Josh on that sh on that show. She had an accent sort of like this, Drake, Josh. <laughs> um, so it was kind of fun when I realized that was her when I started watching Z Nation years later. Um, she's a really good actress. Uh, I know, of course, she's a stunt double like many, you know, of course do. Um, but she still shows Addie's strength and uh, Addie's sheer willpower. You know, Addie's just uh, tough as nails. Um, like I said, Warren's probably more, you know, technically skilled and trained, but Addie, I think, might actually have more heart or perhaps more willpower, um, and she's really shown it. And, you know, she's a very good fighter in her own right, and she just will not stop, you know, as they've seen with her uh, confrontations with the man, she'll just keep getting up and getting up, you know, not, not just stopping or giving up unless you just, you know, literally kill her. And I'm glad they haven't done that. You know, she's definitely at risk with the season three cliffhanger, but I don't think they just kill Addie off at this point in that fashion. We'll see, but Addie, along with a 10K, Doc, and maybe Murphy and such, have become like the big fan favorites of the show. I think, and I, I would really, I'll, I would really uh, hate to lose Addie. You know, Addie's just incredible. And she's had some really good fight scenes in the past season as well with that uh, Ender, as well as with the man, just very physical, just incredible to see her heart and willpower and determination. It's been awesome. And I really, uh, I love Anastasia Barnova's performance. And I would I'd love to meet her sometime too. You know, Doc was awesome. But I hope I get to meet more of the cast. Uh, but uh, yeah, so let me know who you guys uh, like, you know, who's your you know, top five favorite characters on a show, you know, it could be quite a bit different, um, but I don't think you can hate any of these guys, really, come on, they're all a lot of fun. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video, hope it wasn't too long for you, if it was, you know, whatever, I wanted to rant about them <laughs> for a while. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys thought, uh, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.